Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in A Course in Miracles, third edition, by Foundation for Inner Peace. And we are on chapter 11, God or the Ego. And this is section six, Waking to Redemption. Today we will go ahead and read the first five paragraphs. Waking to Redemption. It is impossible not to believe what you see, but it is equally impossible to see what you do not believe. Perceptions are built up on the basis of experience, and experience leads to beliefs. It is not until beliefs are fixed that perceptions stabilize. In effect, then, what you believe, you do see. That is what I meant when I said, Blessed are ye who have not seen and still believe. For those who believe in the resurrection will see it. The resurrection is the complete triumph of Christ over the ego, not by attack, but by transcendence. For Christ does rise above the ego in all its works and ascends to the Father and his kingdom. Would you join in the resurrection or the crucifixion? Would you condemn your brothers or free them? Would you transcend your prison and ascend to the Father? These questions are all the same and are answered together. There has been much confusion about what perception means because the word is used both for awareness and for the interpretation of awareness. Yet you cannot be aware without interpretation, for what you perceive is your interpretation. This course is perfectly clear. If you do not see it clearly, it is because you are interpreting against it, and therefore do not believe it. And since belief determines perception, you do not perceive what it means and therefore do not accept it. Yet different experiences lead to different beliefs and with them different perceptions. For perceptions are learned with beliefs and experience does teach. I am leading you to a new kind of experience that you will become less and less willing to deny. Learning of Christ is easy, for to perceive with him involves no strain at all. His perceptions are your natural awareness, and it is only the distortions you introduce that tire you. Let the Christ in you interpret for you and do not try to limit what you see by narrow little beliefs that are unworthy of God's Son. For until Christ comes into his own, the Son of God will see himself as fatherless. I am your resurrection and your life. You live in me because you live in God, and everyone lives in you as you live in everyone. Can you then perceive unworthiness in a brother and not perceive it in yourself? And can you perceive it in yourself and not perceive it in God? Believe in the resurrection because it has been accomplished and it has been accomplished in you. This is as true now as it ever will be. For the resurrection is the will of God which knows no time and no exceptions. But make no exceptions yourself, or you will not perceive what has been accomplished for you. For we ascend unto the Father together, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. For such is the nature of God's Son, as his Father created him. Do not underestimate the power of the devotion of God's Son, nor the power the God he worships has over him. For he places himself at the altar of his God, whether it be the God he made or the God who created him. That is why his slavery is as complete as his freedom, for he will obey only the God he accepts. 
The God of crucifixion demands that he crucify, and his worshipers obey. In his name they crucify themselves, believing that the power of the Son of God is born of sacrifice and pain. The God of resurrection demands nothing, for he does not will to take away. He does not require obedience, for obedience implies submission. He would only have you learn your will and follow it, not in the spirit of sacrifice and submission, but in the gladness of freedom. We are going to go ahead and stop there and we'll pick up on paragraph 6 tomorrow and read paragraph 6 through 10 in the conclusion of section 6, Waking to Redemption of chapter 11, God or the Ego. I love you. Thank you for joining with me. I will see you tomorrow.